Hey guys, Jamin with PC Monkey here, bringing you a do-it-yourself computer repair video. Today we're working on an HP computer, and the problem we're going to show you how to address is a black screen fix. Uh, this is involved when your computer is turning on, so you're seeing all the lights, you may be hearing your fan, so your computer is turning on, but the screen is staying black, or it's so dim that the only way to see it is to like shine a flashlight on it or, or, or something. So that's the problem that we're gonna help you fix today. If your computer's not turning on at all, that's not this video. Go to video number one in the description and that'll be a fix for if your computer's not turning on at all. Uh, now keep in mind, um, oh yeah, first of all, always check out our related video links in the description and our frequently asked questions. It can save you time. Uh, if you need to ask another question that's not there, uh, we get back to you at least a couple times a day to help you out. Now, with any computer repair, there are multiple causes that could be causing your problem. So the idea with troubleshooting is to start on the easiest or cheapest repair first and then progress deeper into the computer uh, for possible fixes. So we're going to take you through four main possible reasons why this could be happening. We're going to show you how to diagnose each, how to fix each, and at the end of it, if you do need a motherboard repair, then we've identified it. So number one, probably 50% of the time or more, the reason why your computer turns on but your screen is black is a RAM problem. So to test your RAM, flip your computer over and we're gonna to need to get into it. Now, most likely your computer, you'll have to unscrew some screws along the edge, maybe some in the middle. Uh, keep an eye on your rubber feet. Some guys like hiding screws under the rubber feet. So I have a small flathead screwdriver that I uh, pry up these feet to make sure that there's no screws under them. They're just held on by double-sided tape, so they'll go down as long as you don't mess them up. Um, I have an easy computer, so I just unplug it and take the bottom off like that. Now, this is your RAM. I'll, I'll zoom in so you can see uh, what the RAM looks like and what we're going to do with it. So in this case, we have one stick of RAM, but two ports. So if you have one stick of RAM in here, like I do, um, you would need to buy another stick of RAM in order to perform these tests, uh, one that we know works. Um, check out video two in the description on, on how to buy correct RAM. Not all RAM will fit every computer. So check out video two, that'll show you how to get the right RAM for what you need. Um, once you get that in, um, you're going to perform these tests. If you have two sticks of RAM, so let's say you have two sticks of RAM, uh, this is how you would perform the test. First, you'd want to make sure they're in there securely. Sometimes they come loose and that can cause the issue that we're dealing with. So if you know what you're doing, just look, see if it's straight, see if it's flush. If you don't know what you're doing, then unplug them. And the way you would do that, these are spring-loaded arms. So you would pull the arms away from each other slightly and the RAM stick should, should just come up. So take them out and then put them in nice and carefully. Make sure they're flat. Make sure they're flush in there and they just snap in. Try your computer, see if it starts. Uh, see if, if the screen displays. If not, um, then we start diagnosing whether one's bad. So take one out and then try to start your computer, see if, if it displays. If it does display, then you've identified a bad stick. You have to replace it. If it doesn't display, try the next one. So put this one back in, take this one out, oops, and then try turning it on again. Again, if it turns on, this one's bad. If it doesn't turn on, then we're done with the RAM test. So that's the first, the easiest, the cheapest fix. Uh, now we're going to progress to step two. If you've tried that, your screen still doesn't display, we're going to go to step two. Now step two is your CMOS battery. Slide you over. This is your CMOS battery, or that's a, at least one way that it can look. Uh, your CMOS battery will either look like that. It'll be uh, wrapped in electrical tape, kinda, and then plugged into the motherboard via port, or it will look like this. It'll be kinda loose. It'll look like a big watch battery, and this will be snapped into like a, a cradle on the motherboard. But either way, this is what you're looking at. If you want some more detailed help in how to access your CMOS battery, uh, check out video three. That's a BIOS reset video. And while we're not performing a BIOS reset, it'll show you how to get into a computer that's less accessible than this to access that. What you wanna do is take this off and, and replace it. 
Now, this is not a likely solution. I'd say less than 10% of the time, this is why we're having the issue, but it's really cheap. These things cost nothing. They're usually very easy to access. So that's why we're doing it as our step two uh, to find out why your display is not working. After you've done the RAM, after you've checked your CMOS battery, now we're gonna move on to the more complicated uh, fix, the actual screen itself, the LCD or the LCD cable. Uh, the easiest way to check if it's your LCD or your LCD cable is by plugging your computer into an external monitor. So let's zoom out. Um, an external monitor or TV, you can plug into your computer one of two main ways. Uh, you can use this port here. This is a VGA port. And the uh, cord looks like this. Maybe you recognize these from, from desktop computers. But you could use a VGA cord to plug into a uh, external monitor or you can use an HDMI port. Now this computer doesn't have one, so I'll, I'll bring this one over. That's an HDMI port. These square ones are USBs. This one is an HDMI port. So you could use either the VGA or an HDMI. You would plug your laptop into the external monitor or TV, and you would turn both of them on. Now, if it displays on the external monitor, and, and this is the test, if it displays to the external monitor, then what you know is that your computer's working, your motherboard's fine, your LCD or your cable is, is, is bad because it's displaying fine. If that's the case and your computer displays, then, then replace your LCD cable first. It's the cheapest part. If that doesn't work, replace your LCD. If you want more help in, in getting into the computer and finding your LCD cable and unplugging it, check out video four in the description. But that'll show you how we get into a computer, find the LCD cable, and, 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 and uh, replace it, or in this case, un unplug it to test. If your computer's not displaying, um, unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. Sometimes a lot of laptops, they don't like external monitors. Um, you have to finagle them to get them to display it if they can. So the first way, some computers will have an external monitor button. Um, look at your user manual, Google your, your computer, see your uh, function keys, see the icons on them. If you do have an external monitor button, uh, I hit it, uh, select it so that it, it will display. Some computers that don't have an external monitor button, if you want to be sure, again, use video for, go into the computer, unplug your LCD cable, and then try the test. That will force the computer to send the display to the external monitor because it no longer has it, its own option. So if you've tried these steps with the LCD, the LCD cable, and the test using the external monitor, and your computer is still not displaying, uh, then we move on to the last step, uh, your CPU or your motherboard. Now the CPU is not very likely. Uh, I'd say it's the same likeliness as the CMOS battery, but again, um, we're exhausting all possibilities. Um, so when you look at your motherboard, you're gonna get into your computer, and the CPU you're looking for is this. They come in two ways. The CPU we're looking for will be in a cradle like this. It, it comes loose, it sits in the cradle, and it screws in, in to secure it. You, you, you use a flathead screwdriver, you would turn this knob to release the CPU so you can take it off, and then put it back on, you tighten it. So that's what we're looking for here. Uh, if your motherboard looks like this, and your CPU is integrated into the motherboard and you can't get it off, then we can't do the CPU test. If you can do the CPU test, replace this. Um, if you need any help replacing it, leave us a comment, let us know. You'd generally be buying the same one that's in there. So if you have like an i5 Intel, you'd be getting an i5 Intel or use the opportunity to, to upgrade if you want. Um, after you've tried the CPU and that hasn't fixed your problem, or if your CPU doesn't come out, at that point, we're looking at a motherboard replacement. And uh, we've identified that as the reason why your computer is not turning on. So we've taken you through the whole range of things it could be, checking the RAM first, your CMOS battery, uh, your LCD and, and cable, testing those by using an external monitor, all the way down to your CPU and ultimately your motherboard. So this is the whole range of things that could be the culprit for why your computer is not displaying. If you had any questions or need any help, 
Um, leave a comment down. If you have a question on one of the related videos, leave a comment there or here. We try to get back to you twice a day at least. Um, if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer pair, please subscribe. And if this was helpful, uh, please like and share. Thank you so much for watching.